What's up, y'all? This is Kyrie Thomas from Wesley TV, and I'm on Real Talk with the Ricks. My boy Kyrie from Wesley TV, man. What's going on? What's good, man? How you been, bro? I'm good, man. Been real busy, and I'm glad to finally be able to sit down with you. Appreciate man, you, man. I appreciate you, bro. We've been chopping this up for like, about like a month or two now, so I'm just yep. glad we finally you know got this to make it happen, bro. For yep. real, for real. Man, so, you know, let's go ahead and get a little bit about your background, you know, for everybody that doesn't really know you but knows your platform and everything. So, like, let's get to know Kyrie, bro. So, tell me about your background, man. Where you from? Uh, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, my mom's side of the family is actually from Panama, like the country. A lot of people don't know that. But they see my mom and they'll be like, oh, where your mom from? She's from Panama, so I'm going to go ahead and say that. Uh, but mainly, I'm from Nashville, lived in Nashville my whole life. I don't want to say what area in general. Well, I mean, I say Antioch from Antioch. Mm -hmm. Lived in Mississippi, South Haven, Mississippi for one year, and then we moved back. And that was in, like, fifth grade. But for most of my teenage and adult life, I've been in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So, why did y'all go to South Haven for like a year and do that back? I just didn't like it too much out there. No, so around that time, this was like, this was like around 2008. You know, like with the housing market, it, like mm -hmm. it was some, what, uh, not a depression, but what's... It was what, a crash. It was not a crash. I'm just talking about though. And that it not, it wasn't a depression either. Yeah, like it was, it was something like that, but it's a word for it when it's shorter. I don't, recession, that's what it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, it was a recession. And she had just moved down there and, and then like, you know, a whole bunch of people got laid off. She got laid off, so we came back to Nashville. We actually lived with my granny for a little bit. And uh, she made it out of that situation and doing way, way better, which is good. But, yeah, that's why we left from there. I'm actually glad we did because I feel like Nashville is a great place to grow with anything, especially with what me and you do. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it's an open drawing board for the most part. So definitely. I fuck with Nashville. I plan on staying here for a minute. Definitely, bro. Yeah, I definitely feel the same, you know, Nashville right now because it's not anything specific every catered towards us, especially specifically our people and our culture. Right. It's not the catered towards us. So right now it's like the open market for anybody to be successful in any type of creative, like, creative uh, world, you yeah. know? So I do, definitely feel you on that for sure, man, for real, for real. Yeah. So when you came out to Nashville and everything, like, I know you did it off the rip, just get straight into camera. So, like, what were some things that you were interested in when you made that transition? <laughs> That's funny. So... The very first thing that I've ever been into was like I'm always it's always had something to do with computers. Like I got my first computer and I was like really like five or six. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I'm 23 now, by the way. I was like five or six, and my mama told me that I couldn't use it for real until I learned how to type. So I got on like I used to do this typing program, and I just learned how to type. And after I learned how to type, shit, you seven, eight years old on the internet, you looking at all type of shit. Yeah. So really, the first thing that I did get into was video editing. and I had Sony Vegas, an old version of it. I used to do just weird shit. I was like 19. Then you fast forward some years, I can't put like a timeline on it, but that's when Soulja Boy came out. He was popping on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's really where I got most of my blueprint from. I started making beats because of him. I used to have FL Studio. I had a crack version, obviously. You know what I'm saying? And that's really how most of the rappers that know me today, like from blogging, mm -hmm. I feel like the reason why they like already took me serious is because they knew me from producing. So, yeah, I used to make beats. The first artist I just really, like, produced for, for real, for real, here was Chopper Mandel. But that was a long time ago, back before he was where he's at now. So, Dude, that's like, that's big. You know, just have that under your belt, even though he was where he is then. Like, even though, just say, I was in your catalog, bro. That's huge, bro. Yeah, thank you. That's tough, bro. And, you know, you, you already been interviewing, like, great people like that, too. So, you know, that's already been in the dope. So, you can yeah. still be doing it. But, yeah, like, even the, on the music tip, that's definitely big. You know, that's dope, bro, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Man, so when you started getting into rap, like, was well, that something that you thought that you were going to do? Like, really started doing producing for a lot of artists before you got into the interviews and stuff? Yeah, bro, like, I really, like, I've all, I love making beats, to be honest. I still got my old computer with literally all my beats on it, all my tag. Um, but yeah, Soldier Boy kind of, like, gave me that blueprint of, you know, make beats. Like, just, just go on there, motherfucker, make beats. It's, it's hella rappers. Like, it's still hosted today. It's hella rappers. But as I was going older, I make beats probably till like, I was, like, 16 or 17 something like that i just at the time like just producers in nashville it was just like hard for like it's not easy to make money you know what i'm saying when you're a producer and you, you know i mean you ain't really got no clout for the most part i think producing is just a clout thing you know what i'm saying like people would pay you for your beats if you have clout really and you know what i'm saying it wasn't no really no popping artists like that to send beats to so 
I kind of like just got out of that. And once I started doing, once I picked up my camera, like the money that I spent on my camera, I think I made it back like so quick and like so quick off of a music video. It wasn't even good. Mm -hmm. It was back when I first started. I was like, man, I ain't trying to do that producing shit right now. I could probably go back to it later, but started shooting music videos um, probably back in 2017. And I came up with the blog idea shortly after that. So that's just what I've been doing since then. I don't even shoot videos no more. Yeah, I never knew you shot music videos, bro. Yeah, yeah. So when did you, like, when you started getting some music videos, were you, like, more passionate about that? When you picked that camera up, beside how much money you was making at? Yeah, honestly, I still am. I still am, to be honest. But, you know, I got to do what people demand. Like, you know what I'm saying? If people want to see these interviews, you know, all the stuff that I post, that's what I'm going to go with. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter me like it just don't matter what I like it really matter what the people like I gotta do what's gonna be better beneficial for me you know what I'm saying and it's cause you can follow the brand basically like you know like they follow this so that's what they expect from the brand so I have to put this out cause this is what they're expecting yeah yeah and like and what's crazy is that what well, what's sleep though I don't I ain't even gonna have to shoot music videos for it to be music videos on the platform really um, once I realized where the platform was going I only shot music videos just so people can see that you can actually have a music video on What Sleep. Now people just send in promos and like all those videos that you be seeing on there, if you see them, mm -hmm. um, I don't shoot those. I just have my brand on there because, you know, I mean, if I'm promoted, it's going to be on my platform. I got to, you know what I'm right. saying? But I, I ain't shot a video in a while, bro. Honestly. Yeah, do you miss it? Yeah, it's cool, bro. Like seeing how you, I know you feel what I'm saying when I say this, but like seeing how people react from something that came straight from your camera to your computer, like, it, I don't know, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? Different type yeah. of feeling. Yeah. Definitely. I, I definitely feel that because I sometimes still right now myself don't feel like my video is hard. So when I drop something and I get that, you know, that reaction from the people that's looking, I'd be like, man, all right, let's get back to the next one. I got to see what I can do next, next time, make this one better. Because ooh, ooh. that's something I'm always doing is always heavily critiquing myself. Yeah, but I have to again, you know, like you're saying, look and see what your audience is doing and saying, react to your stuff. So yeah. they react well. So I, I definitely know I'm doing something right. Yeah, exactly. You are. And like with you, like your interviews, bro, they go up and everything, um, definitely. And your beats, I've been seeing the little thing that you've been doing. Like, you know how to really market yourself, too, bro. Like, your Man. marketing skills are amazing. Thank like you. how you and uh, the natural JG had the little beef and everything. You had me going. Like, I even thought it was serious for a minute. I'm going back from page to page. Like, all right, but where you even started it? So can we get, like, a little bit of insight about that, bro? Uh, yeah, actually, Nashville JG, you know, I think it's cool that y'all are doing, y'all have linked up on something. But that's actually, like, he's been my friend for a long time, really since, like, 2015. Like, I've known him for a long, long time. I remember he first started doing YouTube. I remember he remembers when I first started doing what I'm doing. So to see him doing good, like, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? He really was the one that helped me understand the in and outs of YouTube, how to get views, and just how to, like, monetize yourself. But um, me and Nashville JG, like I said, we just really been cool, real good friends for a long time. The past two years, we've gotten closer. Um, yeah, we really just call each other a lot. Like, when, uh, like whenever we're around each other, we just joke around, bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Make videos. That's it, really. I mean, we real cool. Like, he, he's actually met my mom. He's one of the few friends that actually met my mom. He can actually, you know, come to my house whenever he wants to. Uh, like, I fuck him, bro. Um, I don't think we'll ever get into nothing that's just, like, too, too serious. But, yeah, that's, that shit was just for laugh. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People say we need to be vlogging more. Mm -hmm. Because you know how we people say we funny with each other, but you know what I'm saying with all the shit that I all the stuff that I got going on, excuse me, it's just it's hard to find time to just you know play around with somebody. You know what I'm saying? But we do business together. Actually, these shirts on the What Sleep merch, uh, me and him actually gonna do that together. That's um, dope, though. You know, friends going into business and be uh, like doing successful things together, bro. That's definitely dope, man. For yeah. sure. And that's, that's, like, really cool and everything that, you know, you guys have known each other for so long and developed that friendship. In fact, that you said you guys, you know, got back close to these past two years, and now you guys are developing, and your brands are bigger and everything. So, like, y'all are definitely going to be successful, you know. Y'all moving right. Thank you, bro. For sure, for sure, man. So, with the uh, whole interviews and everything, I remember you telling me, like, now you're kind of making this little transition and everything. So, like, what kind of like you know is separate, like making you not want to you know do the interview so much like get into a different path what's pushing you to the other things right now okay
Okay, so really for the most part, I feel like, well, well my, I'm just speaking on my platform. Mm -hmm. I feel like interviews, like with me doing them, like they're cool, but for the most part, I just don't really go too in depth on like, you know, all the beef or the bullshit that people talk about. And I mean, there's various reasons for that. Like, you know, people, you really got to watch what you post. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's real important. You can't just be posting anything about anybody, especially if you have a platform of people that you you're influenced by because like people will take that and run with it so I really watch what I post so that kind of goes back to you know me not talking about BS in my interviews and really some people know but I've learned to grow out of it but I just haven't I ain't really just been an open person like that it take a lot for me to you know just really sit down and talk to somebody I gotta really be comfortable so at first I really didn't even like being on camera like I really didn't like you know just really doing interviews for only, I really honestly the main only reason why I did interviews is because like you know as a blog you know what I'm saying you can repost content all, all you want right. but as a blog you're not going to be original if you don't create your own original content and you can do that with interviews like it's just really good for, it's good for business really mm -hmm. but I don't have to really do them anymore being that I have they got mayor with the town hall show mm -hmm. he's going to be doing the interviews now so all I got to do is film him Edit it, post it. I don't gotta. I don't want to. I don't want to do the interview, edit it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do everything. You know what mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what I, I see. What's the get to? Just you know, certain people turning in videos for me. I'm chilling. You know what I'm, I'm trying to be a boss with like the media shit. Instead so, of like doing the worker and then the posting and the recording. Exactly. You kind of want to just have, manage your time a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you know, before you be a boss, you gotta. You gotta work your way up to that. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't just instantly start off a boss. I mean, maybe if you got the capital to, but you know what I'm saying? I ain't there yet. So, yeah, I just don't really, I don't really like doing interviews. Well, I don't like interviewing other people for the most part. Unless I just like really, really like know about them. So, yeah. Man, do you think your audience is gonna miss it? You know, you're doing the interviews, you done built the brand off of it. You think they're gonna miss you uh, doing the interviews a lot? Or, I mean, you're not going to necessarily stop, like you said, you know, Mary's going to be doing them, but you think they're going to miss your face, like you want to be in, behind, in front of the camera. Yeah, to be honest, I have thought about that, and yeah, and that's why um, Mayor, he's at, I feel like he had more, he shows more personality mm -hmm. on camera than I do, and I realized that too, like, somebody told me, it was one of my friends, he was like, man, why don't you just get in front of the camera for your interview, and I was like, I don't know. He was like, man, why you gotta be like Vlad? Like, like people. He was like, bro, you a cool person. Like that's basically what he's saying. Like people want to know you. You know what I'm saying? People want to see like who's doing this, who who they talking to. So I started doing that, and then I realized that people actually do like me for me. So I have thought about that. It's just, you know, I gotta elevate. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to. I don't want to. That's just not my lane. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, I'm really trying to just sit back and have videos turned in. Just I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to be that. I want to be the background on dude. Just, just making the majority of the money paying people. It's bad. <laughs> Man, because if I get in front of the camera, I get to study and I can't even do it, bro. Like, it's, it's different bad. having lights at you, camera, somebody looking at you. You know what I mean, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I, can't, I, can't, I know I can't do it. That's why people have asked me, why don't you get in front of me? I just can't. I know I can't. If I do it, it's going. the interview is going to be so many takes, cut, 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 because it's just because of me. Yeah. So I'm like, to save time, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. But um, you know, you know this is gonna be here or there. Yeah. But you know, you definitely doing your thing and everything, bro, for sure going crazy with, with like what sleep T V, you know what I'm saying? Like what what are some plans, you know, in the future that you guys have, you know, developing things that you're working on? I know you already told me about uh marrying anything uh, everything. Is there anything else that what sleep T V is about to get into? Well, so actually I'm kinda diving back into producing and when I say producing I'm not talking about making beats. A lot of people get producing and beat making mixed up, you know. Take Keith, that's somebody that makes beats. DJ Khaled, that's somebody that produces, like, you know what I'm saying? He orchestrates the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, one thing, it's a lot of things. I'll get into a few. Uh, one thing is, you know how Khaled will, um, you know, he'll get three artists that he's cool with. He'll pick the beat and everything, put his song together. I actually have that on the way. Uh, I'll name the artist because. I feel like a little bit after this interview drops, I'll have that on SD Drill. That's somebody I know. My name is Cushy and K9 Uno. I got them on one song produced by this guy named Drayski. He's actually like only 16, 17. 
Uh, I paid him from the beat. Um, basically collected everybody's verses and I'm gonna shoot it and how I got to that point is because you know doing all these blogging doing all these interviews talking to all these artists like I I know just so many artists now you know I listen to new music like every day so it's easy for me to hear a beat and be like oh he would sound good on here he would sound good on here and he would sound good on here you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I'm about to start orchestrating songs that way and being that I have a blog I have a platform where people find music I'm gonna shoot the video myself Posting on my platform, so I'm basically creating a song from start to finish. You know what I mean? That's like what the AR does. You know, yeah. you're actually going to be developing the artist, managing his brand, his visuals, putting them out there. The interview part you can also be doing with Mayor. So you know, you're managing it, like his whole look, his personality, and how his whole audience is going to be seeing. So that's like that's major ball stuff that you're getting into, bro, for real. Yeah, and the you. fact that you know you got the platform right now, so like the views are going to be there. So, like, you could really push somebody like that. So that's definitely great that you've been working on that and been, you know, thinking ahead of the game. Yeah, thank you. And then, I guess, I mean, you know, you mentioned the show. I wouldn't call it a podcast. I wouldn't really call it a podcast. I really just call it a show. You just really talk about all the BS that go on, you know, just, you know, crazy events, crazy topics or whatever. And then there's actually a smoke shop in Midtown, Nashville, called 615 Pressure. I have my hands in that a little bit. Uh, what's crazy, I don't know nothing about weed. I don't smoke weed. I don't, I don't even drink. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. That. Uh, but I have my hands in that. And um, I'm going to be selling merch. Like, these are all things I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I actually, what's crazy, I just got this shirt made today. Um, whenever you, whenever I got on your live, I was headed to the bank. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, I could pull up today. I was like, damn. I need to get one of those what sleeve shirts made because the dude that makes them, he literally like really just around the corner. Mm -hmm. And he prints them so quick. So I'm start selling these through what sleeve. Um, you'll really like as you build your platform, I'm talking I'm speaking to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the viewers I'm speaking to J B. <laughs> uh, you if you I say if you just take about one really ten percent of your following, you can expect them to buy something. So like if you were selling merch, you were selling real talk merch, mm -hmm. um, you can expect about a hundred people to buy something for you. So it might not seem like just because you know you're a video production. Well, I I don't know what you would call it, but just because like you do like what we're doing, don't mean you can't you know just sell merch. Like you can do that. Like you can sell a product. Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, I'm getting into merch and I've been learning all that. At first, I tried to print them myself. But then I realized, I was like, okay, this is too much work. I'd rather just pay somebody to do it for me, and then, you know, I make my profit. One thing I'd be trying to do too much is, you know, do all the work myself. But sometimes you have to. But, yeah, I've got somebody that's going to be printing up shirts for me that I'm going to turn around and sell them on my platform. That can be another source of income. And, you know, T-shirts and just different things, hats, clothes, that'll grow your brand, too, and put a little money in your pocket. Facts. You ever feel overwhelmed? I hear what you say. So I, one thing you try to do is like all the work. You ever be feeling overwhelmed sometimes? Yeah, and uh, I've learned that over time. Yeah, I, I actually do. People ask me a lot, like, "Dang, you did all that!" Like, I'll be telling people like what I wake up and do a day, and they'll just be like, "Dang, so you did all this, 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 and that." It is a lot of work, but you know, I actually, you know, I like doing this, like. You know, I like just doing video things and just things just revolving around my brand. Like my mama always told me, like you'll know, you you'll know what you're doing. Like you know, you found something right when you found something that you like to do. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like when you like to do what you do, even if you ain't getting a little money, or it feels like it's a lot of, or if it seems like it's a lot of work, it really won't really seem like it. It'll never really seem like what sleep is a lot of work. But when I do, I sit down and I just tell myself like, okay, bro. You because like I do do a lot of the day, so I do be feeling overwhelmed sometimes. But that's why I have a good support system as far as like my family, friends, and stuff that help me, you know, realize that, and, you know, so I don't stress myself out. I say it's easy though. You know? Yeah, that's a fact. I be feeling sometimes just like swamp. Like, bro, I be having like seven music videos. I would be yeah. editing sometimes it got to the point where I was editing these interviews the week they were dropping. And I was just like, all right, I'm just going to do them this week because I'm like, I'll just be so tired. But then I just have to re-motivate myself, you know, walk away from the computer for a while. Yeah. I'd say like about like 
I took a week off, my sister came to town. And that was like super good for me. Like it just super, I didn't touch the computer for a whole week, bro. Dang. Felt great, literally. And then ever since I've been back, like I felt like a whole new, like sense of urgency to push everything I've had on the back burners out. And that's why I've just been working on everything, going crazy now. That's good. Like now I just dropped, I just did three videos in like two, no, not two weeks. Yeah, three videos in two weeks, three mm -hmm. videos, I edited them and everything, and I shot two in the same time span. Like, I just be moving now, so. Yeah. Always working and being consistent and everything. So, yeah, like you said, it's definitely good to take a break and walk away, because that definitely gives you, so I feel like it gives you more energy when you come back. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I came back from a little trip that I did, I had so much work to do. I ain't gonna lie, but I had the energy to do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I took a three-day break, and yeah they be they be working <laughs> i ain't gonna lie because i used to never take breaks so i i i'm gonna start doing them more you know, yeah. love it. man so you know what i'm saying bro i again i appreciate you so much for coming out here and chopping up with me bro is there anybody that you love to get any like special shout outs or anything to bro? uh well i want to give a shout out to you you know what i'm saying uh i'll give you a little insight there's actually been a lot of people well i ain't gonna say a lot of people there's been a handful of people that want to interview me but you know, I like I like your platform. Like you know, you know how like every platform has a template. Well, really, every platform doesn't have a template. You know what I'm saying? But it has to be something to make you stick out. You know how like, I have a template that I go by. You have a template that you go by. That's something that sticks out, and that's how you know your platform gonna grow. Like, I like how you've been being consistent with you know posting. Uh, I just like your whole template. You know, I like how you're not scared to reach out to people. So I gotta give a shout out to you. Um, Thank you so much, man. That'd be the hardest thing, reaching out to people, bro. I promise. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and then, you know, as far as, like, that song that I got, I had a lot of people spin me. I had a lot of people give me the runaround. So the three people on the song, got to give a shout-out to them. My name, Cushy from Nashville. S.G. Drill from Nashville. I actually went to school with him. That's crazy. And K-9 Uno from Lewisburg. Got to give a shout-out to them. And, shit. I think I just, I think the last person I just want to give a shout out to is actually my girlfriend because we actually, like a month ago, we started a relationship channel because, you know, like you said with the market and shit like that, I'm pretty good with that and I understand the in and outs of YouTube. I know how to make thumbnails and, you know, we got a cool relationship and she been always wanting to do YouTube. I didn't even know that. So, you know, we're doing that. Um, well, and shout out to everybody that follows the What Sleep TV platform because, man, I actually, back in 2019, I was actually about to stop doing interviews for a minute, and I'm glad I didn't. I had two friends in my ear that was like, nah, bro, don't do that, do this. And in summer 2019 is when I got a lot of my, I built, I built a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I did a Jelly Roll interview at the time, if you know who that is. So I'm glad that I didn't. So, yeah, and shout out to those two people, Malcolm and Denzel, shout out to y'all. So, and everybody that followed the What Sleep platform, I appreciate y'all. Y'all changing my life, whether y'all realize it or not. So, man, that was the like the best shout out I ever heard, bro. And this, that was felt <laughs> like it was from the heart, bro. For real, for real. Thank you, bro. I really like appreciated how you was just talking about everybody that's been in your ear, even when you felt like you was down, like you didn't stop, and they just telling you like, I like that. Just to hear that you got these type of people in your ear, bro. That's definitely motivating. For real, bro. Thank you, bro. Love bro. that, man. Much success, bro, again, bro. I'm so glad we got you on here. I can't wait to get you back out here once the tape drop. I Rock need first. that. So once you put the whole orchestrated, because you know you're the producer, so once you orchestrate the whole thing, bro, we got to get you back on this on, uh, on the couch, bro. Yeah, yeah. And um, for the people that's watching it, this is going to drop before he does an interview or a video for my platform. Be on the lookout for that, too. We're going to do that real soon. You know, I just got a lot going on right now, but trust me, I'm going to get to it. I ain't going I don't, to I don't play with time. Oh, yeah, nah, we already know we locked in, bro. We, I got you, bro. We're going to take care of everything, bro. We got it. Yeah. Man, I appreciate you again, bro. Let's go ahead and get you up out of here, man. I get you. All right, man. Appreciate you again. All right, bro.